What's up, divas? And what's up, divas? It's your girl, April. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Wednesday. It's Real Talk Wednesday. And we're about to dish out this dirt. You guys, first of all... Okay, because I had to do it loud enough so y'all could hear me. You got to really concentrate when you're doing like that tongue smack. Okay, concentration. No. So, I wanted to make sure y'all could hear that, all right? So anyway, by the time y'all get this, it'll be Wednesday. Y'all know I record on Tuesday. I've had a long day, okay? So, the day started off. Normally, okay, let me tell y'all this. Let me just tell y'all this. Okay, I don't remember if I mentioned to you guys last Wednesday, but I started walking. I did, because I didn't like going to the gym anymore. It was like so drabby and just like dungeon-like at the YMCA. Like, I really wasn't like a huge fan of it. And every time I would go, I would just like count down like, oh, oh my God. Uh, can I get off this damn treadmill or this elliptical? Oh my god, when we leave it, I cannot wait for this hour to be over. I can't take this for my eighth year. This is all the things that was running through my mind. Like, I could not wait for the hour to be up. It was like so boring in there. You know what I'm saying? So, I stopped going and um, I canceled my membership and I started walking. I canceled my membership yesterday. Well, I didn't cancel it. I called to cancel it, so I got to go there and cancel it, which is nothing. And I'll do that like by the end of this week. So I started walking and first I started walking it was like a mile and a half you know what I mean it was it's it's at night and I was getting tired and me and Tati Tati would go with me so I would wear these we would wear these these little flashlight things okay and it's got lights on them you see it they're really cool they're a dollar and I've had these for a long time so they do really last a long time and you can get these from Walmart and like the camping section so in case you guys are wondering where to get them or what have you then you can get them from Walmart oh shit I did not even know that it has a lever where you can pull it down at okay so this is like super freaking cool hold on so what do you do with the lever oh oh what the so that's like if you're looking down and you need a light. Well, I don't need that. So anyway, so we bought these um, like a year, not a year ago, but like a few months ago, like six months ago, we bought those and um, they're really good. They're really worth it, but you can always replace the battery. But for the price of a battery, you can just go buy new ones. They're right at the dollar store, um, not dollar store, excuse me, at Walmart. Um, these probably ain't gonna last too long if you see them at the dollar store meaning they're not gonna have any but anyway so i was doing a mile and a half and the mile and a half was like oh my god i can't do it like i could do it but my legs were hurt let me tell y'all so one day last week i said you know what sugar because i had my dog with me we gonna walk all the way around to the next side and walk back home so that was actually three miles a bitch has been walking three miles every morning faithfully okay as soon as i drop off mumsy to school i come back sugar's always with me and i get cocoa and we go for a three mile walk and it takes like an hour and 10 minutes whatever but it's amazing like i love it it's just me and the dogs and i have like the best time ever just me and my dogs walking and I don't know. I don't know how much weight I lost, but I don't really care because it's strengthening my legs and it's making me feel better. And I'm pretty sure in the long run, I will lose some weight. And I have been drinking water with apple cider vinegar as well as mixing it with a sweetener, which is stevia. Uh, I think that's how you say it. It has no calories in it. And I eat that and I eat like small meals a day. But today, unfortunately, I didn't get to go walking because I had to go on a field trip with Mumsy. So, as soon as I'm done recording this video, I'm going to go walking because I just, I don't know, I get used to it and you gotta keep it up, keep the momentum up. So, you know what I'm saying? So, yes. So, that is what I've been doing, okay? And as for the hair that I'm rocking, I have been wearing it since last week. Um, this is by youmayhair.com. Um, they sent this to me as a review. It's a lace front, okay? And goddamn, this wig is bomb ass, all right? This is the best fucking curly wig I've ever had, all right? Um, well, you know, it's if I had to choose this and, like, best lace wigs, their curly one would be together. I have been wearing this, um... 
Well, I haven't been wearing a week. Um, I've been wearing it for like four days, four or five days, and I have not re-wet it yet. Like when I say, you know how normally when you have a curly wig, you got to re-wet it? No, I don't. It's a lace front, but it's so pretty. It's 22 inches. Oh my God, I freaking love it. And let me tell y'all. So I've been using this, got to be because it will hold your hair down and it'll also hold your wig down but you know it gets like the flaky sometimes so then i was like well i'm gonna try this one now walgreens got a sale on all the got to be products 3.99 you ain't gotta buy nothing to get a 3.99 everything is 3.99 so i got this one now y'all see this is the extra large one they only have a few of these but you get 33 percent more you know, a bitch got this one. I mean, they had these ones too, and they, they had this size. They had this size for this this one, but I'm like, fuck that. I'm gonna get more. So this is the extra large one. But they do have the regular size one. Everything is $3.99. So I got that, and then I got this spiking wax because I want to see if it'll work. But anyway, so I got this one because this is the invisible one, and it's supposed to make it. You know, you're not supposed to get any type of like crusties or whatever you want to call it. Let me tell you something. I knew there was a reason I took this back a month ago because I bought it from the grocery store and it was six dollars and some change and I was I tried it and I was like this stuff is really not holding my my hair down like this stuff is so I'm taking it back so I took it back and I was like the other day I was like you know what I'm gonna retry this again because I hate when it flakes at like because this one is thicker I said I'm gonna try this again so it's $3.99 I tried it this morning again and I blue dry my wig and tried to stick it down this stuff does not keep your wig stuck down for real like yeah no because you know what this all was stuck down this morning with this and like now look at it like it was it's been like this like it never stuck down like I blue dry it blue dry and everything and it did not stick down like this even even my little baby hairs, they all lifted up. Okay, with this one, it doesn't do that. This consistency is totally different versus the consistency of this. This comes out thicker and more like glue. This just comes out like gel. So it's not really the same consistency and the same formula. You know what I'm saying? So if I had to choose, I would definitely choose this. This says vertical styles. This says scream and hold. So these two are totally different. You know what I'm saying? They are totally different. You might think because it says um, ultra glued, it's not the same product actually. This holds it a lot better. Now this holds better than most gels, but honestly, you're going to have to use this if you want your wig to hold freak down. I want to know everybody else's opinion. So for those of you that are watching this video and have used either one of these, let me know what you think. What do you think of this black one if you've used it? What do you think of this yellow one if you've used it? If you've gotten both, what do you think the both of them are like? And if you've used the wax, let me know. Okay? So, yes. Um, and basically that is it. Um, I'm trying to remember what the fuck is going on in my life that you guys would be interested in. Which is probably basically nothing. Um... Because my ass is boring. Oh, yes. Hold up. Hold up. So, I goes to my post office box yesterday. And I get a car with another Wonder Woman sticker on it. Stamp on it. Which I love. Okay. So. Yes. Did one of my divas here send me two gift cards, which equal $20 for the 99 cents only store? OMG. So it says from a cat from a Cali family. I think that's what it says. CA fam. Being real. Being real is so cool. Joan. So Joan, if you are watching this video, I want to personally thank you so much. I am so excited. I was debating yesterday because I got to say whether to go. And I was like, no, no, no. I have gone a couple times without Mumsy. So I cannot do that to her. So we're going to go after I finish my walk. We're going to go because I think that would be like my reward to myself. We're going to go to the 99 cents only store so that we could get some things to do for a video. So I just was so excited when I seen this. And when I showed it to Tati, she was like, yes, girl, that is totally you. You, you definitely will use that. I was so excited. Okay, I know that some people is like, oh my god, it's only a 99 cent store. Why are you so excited about it? It's a dollar store. I love stuff like this. Like, for real, you guys don't. I love going into like the cheap stores, like the Dollar Tree, the 99 cent store. I could spend 
all day in there and probably all my money too okay yes i should like buy a dollar tree you know what i mean make my own little franchise some type of dollar tree but anyway so yes joan i want to thank you so much for sending me these cards me and mumsy love them and we want to thank you and we will definitely be spending them tonight so make sure when you see a video that next 99 cents only video will be thanks to joan so yes you guys yes so yes um i was just so appreciative and i think everybody who sends me anything even if you just send me a card or a letter just saying hi i love that too because i keep everything i'm not a hoarder but i love to keep things that people send me you know even if it's a love letter i love it so because i like to read so yes so i wanted to say thank you for that okay so let's do this real talk video and yes if you have a real talk that you would be interested in hearing on youtube then you could go ahead and send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com as well as that you can please make sure to put the subject line real talk and if you want to change the names of your characters in the video then go ahead and do so let me know that ahead of time and oh yeah so one more thing so I know I have something to say. So I went to the dentist last week and I had not been to the dentist in like a few years. Okay. Like seriously up here, it's really different. So let me tell you, I have four fillings that I got to get done in my front teeth. $928 that I'm about to spend to get my teeth filled in like fillings and all together with all of the things that's going on with my teeth, 6,000 and it's almost $6,300, okay? And then you ain't even giving me no new fucking teeth? Like, whoa, hold the fuck up. I'm like, <sighs> so I'm not even getting no teeth. And I'm spending 6000 over 6000 for you to fill some teeth. And you think you're about to yank, he want to yank out like six, five or six of my teeth. Like, and then give me this bridge to put in my mouth. Like that's some that is some teeth, but that shit is like some denture type shit. Like in the back of my teeth, like really? I want I want some new teeth. Like I want some fake motherfucking. I want some implants. That's what I want. That's what I want. Some implant teeth. So I'm trying to figure out what would you guys do. Like, do you have any opinions on getting implants or going to a dentist to get like new teeth? Like. I mean, I'm used to it now, but, you know, I wasn't born with my teeth like this. I had my wisdom teeth removed um, probably like 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, 10, 12 years ago. And that's how my teeth spread. And that's how I got the gap in all of this. My teeth used to be all straight and all perfect until they took my wisdom teeth out and didn't put anything in there to replace them. And then my teeth started spreading. And like sometimes I do have my days where I'm really depressed about my teeth because sometimes they hurt and I just hate the gap. And then when I smile sometimes like at certain angles, I just don't like the way my teeth looks. So you, whenever you see me on like Instagram or anything, you never see my teeth when I'm smiling because I just feel really, really self-conscious about it. And like I would love to get some implants, but they're really expensive. So I can't afford that. So I'm trying to find like some alternative ways like pre bono, pro bono, pro bono dentists or dentistry or something like that. You know what I mean? And like, no, it was seven teeth. He wants to take out seven of my teeth because my teeth are like in horrible condition. He was saying, because, you know, I don't have any dental insurance. So I haven't been in a dentist in a long time. And when I did have dental insurance, there was, it was stipulations. So, you know, so now it's like, oh my God, I'm like really going through something. And when I heard that from the dentist the other day, when I went, I broke down in tears, like literally broke down in tears the way he kind of like described my teeth. And it was like, so hurtful. Like you just really can't imagine. Um, like, so when I see people with like really nice teeth, good teeth, I really feel some type of way because I just want my teeth to look like that. You know what I mean? I don't want to have bad teeth. It's just, it's, it's a hard thing to go through when it comes to my teeth. You know what I mean? And I really don't talk about it a lot to people because that makes me really feel insecure and I would love to get them fixed, but you know, they're expensive. So I don't know, like what, if you guys have any advice about that, like let's leave your comment below. Okay. So we are going to go and get into this real talk video and yeah, let's just, let's, let's do this.
Mhm. Jetzt zu, jetzt zu. Okay, you guys. So, dear April, thank you in advance for taking time out of your schedule to read and respond to my issue. I am currently 34 years old and have been married to an older gentleman who is 57 years old for almost two years. Although he is my mother's age, he is the love of my life. I waited a long time for this. I have no prior marriages, although he has been divorced. Anyway, because I am in my 30s and my biological clock is ticking, I tried to have a baby, but when I didn't become pregnant, I thought that there was something wrong with me. So we went to see a reproductive specialist. To make a long story short, after several tests, I find out that there is nothing wrong with me, but my husband does not produce any sperm. He is the infertile one. The specialist has informed us that if we want to have kids, adoption or cryobank with either IVF or IUI is the only option. I'm not really sure what that is. I never thought that I would be in a position of not having children. I really, do, I really don't want to use a sperm donor, but I'm not sure about adoption. What do you think? If we go with a sperm donor, the baby will not have any of his DNA. He tells me he is okay either way, but I don't know. Adoption seems like a good idea, but I secretly always wanted to have my own child with my own genetics. If we go with a sperm donor, I worry how my husband will view the baby. Also, both options are expensive. Maybe I should forget about having kids. Love, Tasha, because she didn't change her name. P.S. I love your real talks and would appreciate your take on this. So, wow. That's a lot. So, she's 34 years old. She's dating a 57-year-old man. He can't produce any sperm. Um, and she wants to have a baby. Honey, listen. I was going to suggest something to you, but if the doctor is telling you that your husband is the one that's infertile then what I was going to suggest is not going to work um, and that was something that I did um, with both of my last two children because they say women are very fertile not every woman is fertile but you also need to know when is the time the right timing so I didn't know this and even though I had three children already it took me forever to have one with my husband so I read this book called Taking Charge of Your Fertility by Tony Welch and it was a really great book it was in layman's terms it showed you how to do stuff and I read the entire book had notes had charts everything and probably within a month after reading it I was pregnant and then we tried again just regular way and it didn't work out again so I read the book a second time and got pregnant for the second time with Mumsy you know what I mean but being that those circumstances are quite different from you and mine's with your husband then it's not gonna work but um I don't recall you okay so you have been married so you are married to him so that's a wonderful thing I mean and you know something adoption is always a nice thing adoption is always a nice thing because you always it's like adopting someone who needs a good home who has come from a family that's really not worthy that has mistreated them or just can't, is not able to take care of them and why wouldn't you want to bring a child to, into a good world or just bring a child into a world that you can help them better themselves however I understand the part, the part where you say and you want a child with your own genetics okay so that's that's you know that's someone to, that's something to think of um, however both options are very expensive like you stated so You don't, I mean, this is so hard to, like, I can't tell everybody you got to have a kid. You got to have a kid. But for those people who want to have a child, I can totally understand and totally get where you're coming from. Adoption is a lot more expensive and adoption is a lot more work. You have to be past chess. You got to be checked the fuck out. You got to go through this and through that. My take on this is going to, like, a sperm bank is a lot easier. And it may be a little costly, However, sometimes you got to do what you need to do in order to get what you want in life. So you want this baby. Does your husband want this baby? I'm pretty sure that he does. You guys want to have a baby together. Okay. 
Now, me personally, if I wanted to have a child and there was no other way to go about it but sperm bank and adoption, me personally, I would go with going to a sperm bank way before I would go with going to adoption only because I know the type of person I am and they probably ain't gonna give me no baby they ain't probably gonna give me nobody else's kid adopt they ain't gonna let me adopt the kid okay I think you have to have the good you have to have a good record for that and I don't have a good criminal I might have a criminal record so I don't really think that I would be good with adoption you know what I'm saying I mean if they was to give me a child then that would be great but I don't want to I don't really want to adopt any kids either because I have enough of my own but if I wanted another baby you know going through pregnancy pregnancy being pregnant to some people is not like a cool thing but you know what let me tell y'all something when i see a pregnant woman i think that they're the most beautiful thing in the world because they got a baby inside of them and then even though they're bloated and huge or whatever they're still so pretty you know what i mean like they're just so pretty you know what i mean but you are more concerned about how your husband is going to feel because you're saying that the baby is not going to have any of your husband's genes. True indeed, that may be the fact that the baby is not going to have any of your husband's DNA. However, the most important thing is that the baby is going to have you and your husband's unconditional love. And if your husband is good, and he is understanding and he knows what's going on and he is very acceptable to either adoption or getting um, sperm injected into you then by all means why don't you take him up on his offer you know what I mean sometimes we have to step outside of the box and not always think about what we want as a person but you know how do you think it may make him feel just saying, well, that's not going to have any of my husband's DNA. We don't really want to bring that up to him because we're already, already aware of that. He's already aware of that. And we don't want to make him feel less of a person or less of a man. However, if he's all up for you being injected or do, injected with sperm from another man to get pregnant and for you and him to have a family and a baby together, then why not? You know what I'm saying? Why not? That baby is still part of you and him because that baby is part of you that baby is going to have your dna and your dna is a part of your husband meaning that you and him share a world together you share a life together you share yourselves with one another so that baby may not be biologically his but heartfully that baby is still his you know what i'm saying and regardless at the end of the day it's still a baby it's a life it's something that you and your husband is going to nurture together and he is going to see you through everything when it comes to being at the doctor and pushing the baby out and making sure you go and have well appointments and that you eat good and you eat you overeat and you you get all your addictions like what you're addicted to while you're pregnant you know, he's going to make sure that that's taken care of. And why not bless him with that? You know what I mean? Like, not everyone is blessed to be able to carry a baby in their bellies or even to produce one, unfortunately. You know? But if you have a mate, a spouse, that is more than willing to be a part of any type of fertility, then go ahead with it. Because you don't see that much. And I'm pretty sure he's well aware of the issue. And he still wants to be a part of it. And he still wants a baby with you. So me personally, if it were I, I wouldn't give up. Because why would you want to give up on having a baby? You're 34 years old. It's time. You're at your peak where it's time for you to have a baby. You and your husband have a family together. And have a little, little, little one running around. You know what I mean? It's always nice to have a baby. I mean, hey, I got five of them. Who am I to say? I mean, I really can't give advice on not having kids and having kids because I have five kids, okay? And I'll tell you what, if I had no kids, I don't really know where I would be in life. I think that me having children was the best thing in my life um, ever because it showed me a lot of responsibility and it made me more motivated and it made me push for more. So me having children was a blessing to me and they get on my nerves sometimes, like for real. I'd be just like... Oh my God, I can't stand them. But I wouldn't be where I'm at today in life without my kids. You know what I mean? They really appreciate me and they've always been there for me. So that's why I just be like, I mean, if you want to have a baby, have a baby. Don't worry about what other people say. 
sometimes yeah it may be expensive to have or to have um artificial insemination insemination oh god i never could say that word but you know what i'm saying it may be a little expensive to go about going to a sperm bank but l listen to this honey kids are more expensive in the Kids in general are expensive, so take that up as one of the costs of having children. Because kids themselves are expensive in a whole. They are very, very expensive. So I really wouldn't worry about the price because sometimes we put price on things that we really, really want in life and that's really, really going to make us happy. And with those things that may be pricey, and we because we put a price on them, we don't go through with them because of the price. Let me tell you something. There have been so many things that I have wanted in life, but then I stopped because of the price. Like, April, you know how much that car costs? That is such and such. You better get yourself a cheaper car because you got bills to pay, you got kids to pay for, you got kids to take care of. What if you wake up and your car is going? Like, seriously, like, it's shit like that. So, I don't really put a price on happiness, okay? Like, yeah, granted, I like to go to the cheap-ass stores and I like to go shopping at the Dollar Tree or the, or the thrift store but if it's something that I really really want and it's gonna make me really happy then it has no price like it's 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 not, there's no limit if it's gonna make me happy and it's something that I really want then I'm gonna buy it or I'm gonna spend for it regardless you know so when your husband tells you that he's all for it and he wants to be a part of this and it's not going to bother him just keep that in mind and sit down and talk with your husband. But don't give up your baby ideas or baby wants and needs because of the price. There's always a will and there's always a way. Okay? I'm telling you guys. Never put a price on something that you want in life and that you that's going to make you happy. I'm not saying go out and splurge all your fucking money and buy dumb shit. But if something is something that you really, really want... And you know it's going to make you happy. And it's something you really, really want. Get that shit. It don't matter if it's at the sperm bank. It don't matter if it's on the car lot. It don't matter if it's in Macy's or in the jewelry store or wherever the fuck it's at. If it's something that you've been wanting and you really, really want it and you know it's going to make you fucking happy, go for it. You know what I'm saying? Because you only live one motherfucking time. One time. You don't want to be that type of person that be like, damn, I wish I could have, would have, and I should have, and now I can't. Don't be like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? Don't be like that. If you see something that you want, you know it's going to make you happy, go for it. I'm not saying I splurge all the time because I don't, but if it's something that I want, I'm going to get it. I'm going to have to save up a little bit for it. Just like now, I want a new car. I'm not about to make nobody's payments, but I'm about to keep saving, and by June, a bitch gonna have a new car. Yes, all right? Or pay for it. It may not be 2017, 2016, or 2015, but I bet you it won't be nothing no less than a 2011 or 12, because a bitch gonna have a new car, and that shit gonna be all paid for, and I'm gonna be happy, because that's something that I really want, and I feel like I deserve it. So the same thing goes for you, Tasha. Same thing. Don't let pat. Don't let life pass you by because of prices. That's real shit. Just don't. Okay, so this one is actually roommate issues. Okay, so like what? Yes, roommate issues. And I know it's getting a little dark now, but okay. So let's read this. <sighs> hey April, you can call me CC. If you use my real talk in a video, I just want to say I love your videos. Your reviews are amazing and you are so real and tell it like it is. When I get older, I want to be like you. All right, girl. My issue is with my roommate. I'm 20 years old and a junior in college. I live in an on-campus apartment with my roommate and best friend for almost three years now. Let's call my best friend Jojo. I love her to death and we have been friends for seven years. But sometimes she gets on my nerves. But that's normal for friends. In February, we have to sign a new housing contract with the university. And if not, then we will have to live off campus in an apartment. The last two years we lived in a dorm together, but this year we moved into an apartment and now we have separate rooms, a bathroom, kitchen, etc. I'm not going to lie, my room gets a, gets really messy sometimes, but I always end up cleaning it up and it's not as bad now because we don't share the same room. 
But the thing is, she never cleans up. I'm always the one doing the dishes, cleaning the bathroom, sweeping, etc. Plus, I buy and bought all the cleaning supplies, toiletries for the apartment. This makes me resentful because she has only done the dishes twice this whole semester and nothing else. She works at a store on campus and she lets me get lots of free stuff all the time. Sometimes she will get paper plates or toilet paper when she works for the house. But that's it. I have written a passive aggressive note saying how we should both keep it clean. Don't get me wrong. She doesn't leave the bathroom or kitchen messy or gross. But we both share the spaces and I feel we should both help keep it clean. I don't know whether I should live with her next year or not. And it will be hard finding another roommate and I don't want a random person when I'm used to living with her. I will be a senior next year so should I tough it out one more year? Plus she is my best friend and I don't want to lose our relationship of seven years. Please help. What should I do? Cece. So first of all Cece want to be like me when she grow up. Okay, at least she do. Nobody else wants to. But anyway, so as you can see, first of all, Cece, let me tell you something. I don't like shit like that, okay? I could totally relate to how you feel. I be feeling the same fucking way up in this motherfucker, okay? Um, For one, I pay majority of all the damn bills up in this house, okay? I do have my kids that work, that live here, that's older. They, they got to pay me some money, too, for rent. But listen, um... I'm not Mary Poppins up in this motherfucker, okay? No way, shape, or form am I Mary Poppins up in this motherfucker. But I constantly find myself cleaning up after people all the time, washing the motherfucking dishes all the time, cleaning up the motherfucking house all the time, picking shit the fuck up. And when I constantly say something about it, then when I spaz the fuck out and go off, Oh, I'm the bad guy. Everybody's boohoo and crying. Nobody wants to speak to me. Everybody's running to their rooms crying and closing the motherfucking doors. This is the shit. So, yeah, I can totally relate to fucking how you feel. And plus, I'm the one that buys all the shit, too. So, cool. You get some free shit, some toilet paper, paper plates, whatever. That's no big deal. However, it's an equal opportunity. We share all responsibilities and that's the way it should fucking be let me tell you something sweetheart this is what i had to do in my house and i'm about to rehab to do it because it seems like me just verbally telling y'all motherfuckers ain't working but this shit seemed to work okay now i feel like this i got four kids that live in my fucking house and i pay bills i shouldn't have to wash no motherfucking dishes okay ever in life again all right that's how i feel but since these motherfuckers don't really like to wash dishes and don't like to clean up after themselves, I noticed, okay, pick up their shit, pick up their baby shit. It's going to be a list, and I had to do this before. I'm going to make a list, or just a chart, rather. Monday, this person has the dishes. Tuesday, this person has the dishes. Wednesday, this person has the dishes. This is what the fuck you have to do, and unfortunately, you're going to have to do that. Oh, what happened? Hold on, you guys. Sorry about that. My keyboard hit the thing. So this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to sit your roommate down because that's your friend. And y'all been friends for seven damn years. I wouldn't want to lose her friendship neither. That's my friend. I wouldn't want to lose her friendship either. But, you know what I'm saying? You cannot take but so much. A person can only take so much. So, me personally, what I would do is I would have a conversation with her. And let her know, listen, Karen, we have been... Oh, Jojo. Listen, Jojo. We have been best friends for seven years. And we are roommates. And we live together. And I really think that we should share more responsibilities with each other. Meaning the dishes and the cleaning. You're not helping me like you should. And I don't think that's fair. So what I think we should do is have a chart of who does what on certain days. So that way we can keep our apartment clean. And we don't have a misunderstanding. Bottom line. You don't have to go find a new roommate. You don't want to find a roommate and that person is a fucking weirdo, okay? There are a lot of weirdos out there and then you get those who say they're going to do something and then you move them in and they're totally not doing anything. They're not even sharing the living expenses with you and you're footing it all, 
Why bother? Now at least you know that your roommate, best friend roommate, is somewhat responsible because she's sharing somewhat responsibilities, but she's not washing the dishes. And I'm sorry, but like I said, I ain't no motherfucking Mary Poppins up in this bitch, okay? So what I would let her know is I would have that talk with her and let her know, listen, we have to share the responsibilities equal. We both go to school. We both work. We both should share the responsibilities equal. And I don't think that you have been sharing them. And I don't want to have have these type of feelings towards you because I care about you. I love you. You are my best friend and I don't want to feel this way towards you. So I felt the best way to do this would be to talk with you and maybe we could work on a chart together. You don't have to say this day this, you know, maybe one week you do dishes and maybe one week she does the dishes. Make it convenient to where it's convenient for the both of you guys, you know, for the both of you guys to chip in and fill in the responsibilities, you know, don't make it like a, t so as I was saying before my memory card just cut out, but it was full, um, what I would do is I would make a chart, sit down and talk with her, you know, make it to where it's convenient for the both of you guys, you know, one week, maybe you want it to like every couple of days or maybe Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, you do this or, and she does this or whatever, but make it convenient to something where you both are able to handle the responsibilities. Finding a roommate in general, whether it has to do with college or just living situations, the life in general is a hard thing. And sometimes these people out here, you let them into your world and you, you realize in the end, like, okay, you know what this wasn't the best move that I made this person that I've gotten as a roommate is really irresponsible is weird is crazy is a fuck up and I don't want you here and let me tell you something it's a lot harder to get a roommate or out than it is it is in because there are tenant rules and things like that and you don't want to be stuck with someone that you're not able to get out so my opinion is I would try my best to make it work with the person that I've already am familiar with and have already been living with and renew your lease with them listen not everything in life is peaches and cream not everything in life is always going to work out in your favor not everything in life is going to make you fucking happy okay or go your way trust and believe it take it from me because if it did a bitch would not be sitting here fucking complaining talk about i am not mary poppins up in this motherfucker you know yeah granted my kids don't like when i spaz the fuck out and flip out and just go ham on them but within a few hours or maybe the next day we're back cool again and they still love me you know what I mean and they appreciate me and they got the fuck over the shit bottom line and I mean or I could be on it like this like well if you don't like my rules and you don't like picking up after yourselves the door is right there don't let the door hit you with the good lord split you I'm pretty sure they wouldn't want to take that route and leave okay because it's a whole lot more expensive out there in the real world so my dear Okay, CC. Talk it out with your roommate. That's what friends are for. That's what friends do. Real friends do that. You know what I mean? Don't find like you're not able to talk to her. Moving out and not wanting to move back in with her because of something just so simple like that is a little bit harsh and she may take it the wrong way. Some people that are watching may feel like, well, I can't live with nobody messy and I would be, if that were me, I would leave. Okay, well then maybe you're not really a good fucking friend. However, if you've been down and you're really a true friend, then you would tough it out with her. And But not just tough it out. Because toughing it out means not saying anything and just sticking with it and dealing with it. What you want to do is you want to have a sit down with her and make a plan. So that way you guys come together, work together, and you ain't got to be emailing me no more talking about this bitch is dirty and I'm tired of her. Okay? So... Yes, give CC your opinions of what you would do in a situation. Me personally, I would just try to work it out and talk about it. And that's what I do with my kids. I do talk with them. However, after a while, it seems like the talking ain't really helping. And they on to some other bullshit and not listening anymore. I think they kind of like brown nose me for a couple of weeks or like a week or whatever. And then they go back to their old ways. And then I got to come back at them and bring them back into reality. But that's like with anybody in the real world. Sometimes we got to bring everybody back to reality. And yeah, it is a shared partnership. You guys may not be married, but it's still a shared partnership. And you guys love each other and y'all are roommates. Don't break up the friendship and the roommate ship over something that can really totally be fixed. You know what I'm saying? Totally be fixed. 
So this is the last one. Hey April, about a year ago I stumbled across your channel and I'm so glad I did. Your real talks are my favorite thing to watch on YouTube because I love how you don't hold back anything. And sometimes when I'm down, I know your real talks will have me cracking up because once you go in, you don't stop. I need advice though, laugh out loud, and for the sake of privacy, I have changed both me and the person's name. But you can call me Sarah and the guy, Michael. I'm going to try to make this as short as possible, but yeah. Also to give you a little background on me, so you can maybe understand a little more. I'm 21 and I've been single for about, okay, about 7 months. And I met Michael and we have been on, and I met him and we have met on a dating app. Okay, so... Okay, where am I? I lost my place for a second. Okay. Okay, so she said, oh. Okay, so there's two parts to the email. So the first one that I just read you was sent too soon. So what I said, she changed both names, Sarah, Michael, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to try to make this short. Also, to give you a little background on me so you can maybe understand, I'm 21. I've been single for about a year. And I was in an abusive relationship prior to that for two years with someone who hit me and verbally talked down to me, telling me I wasn't good enough and that lowered my self-esteem, leaving me to feel insecure still to this day at moments. I met this guy named Michael and we had met on a dating app. We texted at first for almost two weeks, but one day he offered to come see me so we could go take a walk by the water front in my city. We've been together ever since. He works a full-time job and so do I, but I have more freedom with my phone than he does at work. At first we were texting all day every day, aka the honeymoon phase. Laugh out loud. Seeing each other three times out of the week, going on dates, and it hasn't stopped. But it doesn't happen like that anymore because of his work schedule has changed. We both like our space, but sometimes I do miss him because I don't get to see him as much anymore. He has made me feel so special by listening to me, and he's even on my back about goals that I've told him about, trying to make sure I'm achieving them because he knows that I, what I want in life. Now, the thing is, my insecurity has kicked back in. I feel like the... I feel like he will lose interest in me and a part of me feels like that because I don't get to see him really much anymore. I'm scared that he will find somebody else because he can't see me as much and I know it sounds stupid but he's tired most of the time when he gets off of work so he may not want to talk but will still try to text me because we haven't talked. I told him that I felt this way but it scares me because I have strong feelings. The problem is he has mood swings. In other words, his true colors kicked in. Now I see he He's stressed. Now I know he's stressed and I try not to act crazy. When I feel ignored because I take into consideration that he can't see me as much with his schedule change. I'm just used to us checking on each other throughout the day by texting or seeing him. Most of the time he is cool and then the other times he's mad over something small. If it's because of me, now because of work, stress, his mom, and even sometimes his mood changes and he gets pissed off and shuts me out. At one point, I felt like he was mad at me all the time, and it has made me feel insecure because I was telling him how I felt one day with him being mad all the time, and he said I was nagging. Later that day, he told me he was in a bad mood, in which obviously I didn't know, but I feel like once a man says that, you're pushing him away. That's not what I want, of course, but now it's to the point that where I would let some things go, I didn't. I didn't let slide and all because I didn't want to piss him off. I know sometimes I'm a handful. Sometimes I do understand the stress of his problems. But it's like, damn, I'm not even trying to stress you out. I'm just texting you to see if you're fine. And being as though something already pissed you off, I know I have to deal with you shutting me out. And depending on how I felt before that moment, I will feel like it's my fault because I have a habit with blaming myself. But that's because of my past. When he feels better, he'll tell me it's nothing I did. It was this person or that situation. But still, it affects me. I guess I just need advice on what to do about him. And it's not that I want to leave him alone, but I don't know how to really deal with someone who shuts me out and I feel like he'll lose interest in me and will find somebody else because he can't see me as much anymore. I don't want to feel this way, and but it scares me because I have strong feelings. But with his mood swings, I don't want to, I don't want to do or... I don't know what to do or how to stop feeling insecure. All right, so we're gonna just call her um, Chanel. 
So basically, Chanel, this damn, yes, I tongue smacked for y'all. This goddamn body essential is digging in my goddamn sides, okay? Let's talk about that after this. You feel insecure because you think your man is going to lose interest? Listen. The whole fucking email had me going all over the place because of your insecurities. You got a bitch feeling like this. Calm the fuck down and relax, okay? Some real shit. Calm down and motherfucking relax some, okay? You are a little bit too high strong and you are all over the motherfucking place and you worried about some bullshit. Now, one, it may not all be bullshit because if somebody's shutting you the fuck out of a relationship and when they get mad about some shit that somebody else done did and they shutting you out and they don't want to talk to you or they spazzing the fuck out on you, then, sweetheart, maybe you need to reevaluate that relationship because if someone is shutting you the fuck out then that's not where you want to be you've already been in an abusive relationship now he made you feel some type of way in the beginning but now you're starting to feel insecure he, and you're starting to feel insecure about oh well if he don't get to see me much he's going to lose interest in you and he might lose find interest in somebody else if he's too busy and he's working all the time and he don't get to see you what the fuck make you think that he's going to have time for anybody else because if he's busy working and his schedule um, has him working all the time and he don't get to spend much time with you, then where is he finding time to spend with anybody else but his at the job place? So this is where you need to calm down out. You know what I'm saying? Take a woosa and breathe that motherfucker in and out because you high strung on a motherfucker that's pushing you the fuck out. He's shutting you out. He's getting upset. He had mood swings. Let me tell you something. That's what you call bipolar, all right? When a motherfucker got mood swings, that's what you call schizophrenic or bipolar. I'm sorry, but I don't want to be fucking with nobody who got mood swings. Because one minute you nice to me, and then the next minute you not. That's what the fuck they be calling me, a Gemini. Because they say one minute we nice, then the next minute we not. Okay? And that's what you, you know what I'm saying? You be like, oh, one minute you real nice, and the next minute you not. You be flipping out on people. That's what you, that's you just a Gemini. You a real Gemini. Nah, this, that has nothing to do with one minute I'm nice. Because I could be nice to you real cool. We could be sitting here laughing the fuck up. And then you do some disrespectful shit and then I'm pissed the fuck off. That's just life in general. Has nothing to do with my sign, okay? It has to do with the bullshit that just you fucking did, okay? And it pissed me the fuck off. Has nothing to do with a Gemini. But if you got mood swings... And you acting weird and you having mood swings. I'm like, I don't know if I really want to be around your motherfucking moody ass. Because a bitch like me already moody. And if I've already been through some shit in a domestic violence relationship where somebody was verbally and physically abusing me. Me personally, I'm not going to put up with nobody else's bullshit. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? I might be wrong. Some people are have been in, in relationships and... They go back to that same type of relationship because that's all they know. Now, you, Chanel, you have been single for a year and then you started messing with this guy, okay? And now you happy-go-lucky, but now you're not happy as go-lucky anymore because you guys aren't able to see each other as much and you're noticing his mood swings. Sometimes we need to take a break with each from each other, okay? Because when we around one another too much... Then we start to irritate one and each other too much. And we need to take a little break from each other. It's cool when you need your space. Trust and believe. A bitch be needing space too, okay? I be needing my space the fuck too. But when you're in a relationship with somebody and they're having mood swings, that's really not fucking healthy, okay? It's really not. And if he's saying that you're nagging, maybe some things you are nagging him about, like, we don't get to spend too much time together. We don't get to spend too much time together. That's cool. Maybe you need to get out more and stop depending on a man to make you happy and to fulfill your happiness and the void. That's the number one thing key in life before you can allow anybody to love you or you to love somebody else and to give them your devoted attention devoted time and dedicate yourself to them you have to be dedicated to yourself as a person and give yourself as a person that time not nobody else but you you understand what i'm saying so maybe a year has not been long enough for some people that have left a domestic violent relationship 
a year is not long enough because you go through things. You may be going through shit that you just don't realize. Stressing your own self out. Understand what I'm saying? Depressing yourself. Then you're into a relationship with somebody who has mood swings. Mood swing can trigger anything. A trigger, he can get upset with you and want to flip out. Listen, me, I'm fine. I don't have a man. Okay, I mean, I do have a man. But he's not here right now. And I know y'all like, oh, you got a man, girl? You got I already told y'all that about my ex-husband, okay? So, that's my man. We're back together. But, um, and I'm happy that we are, like, apart. Not apart, but, you know what I'm saying? We work, we work on things together. And we're always on the phone with each other, okay? But, um, You need to just relax a little bit. It just seems like the mo the majority of the email was we don't get to spend too much time together. Um, but he has mood swings. Um, what you what does it say? I'm trying to think. I guess. Listen, let me tell you something. This is the best advice I'm gonna, me personally. Okay, I've already been in a domestic violence relationship with somebody and I really didn't like it, okay? It wasn't really cool. And so, after that, I left and was single for a long time. Well, not for a long time, but, you know what I'm saying? And I met my husband and that's why I was with ever since. And then I got divorced and I went with someone else and that was like the worst decision ever. And he tried that shit. He tried that domestic violence shit with me. That's why that nigga had to go. He had to motherfucking go. I told y'all that's why that bitch is in jail. And today is his birthday, the 31st. And he's spending it in jail. But anyway, so yes. So like I was saying, like when a person goes through like a traumatizing situation, you may not feel like it's traumatizing when you have been in a domestic violence situation, but trust and believe it's very traumatizing. You go through shit and you have to regain your self control, your self esteem, your self back in general, because that person has kicked you down and has taken so much from you. And now that you have found happiness, you are letting the insecurities of what you used to go through bother you and fuck with you in this relationship. However, some things need to be brought to the light, like with his mood swings. Sweetheart, girlfriend, listen. Don't let his mood swings just blow over like it really ain't much or nothing. Because that's sometimes how the shit fucking starts and happens, okay? So, one minute he's having mood swings and then he tells you, oh, it wasn't you. So, you are not mad at me. Someone else has made you mad or something has upset you. But, you're taking it out on me. That's not fair and that's not right to you, okay? That's another sign of abuse. Whether you want to admit to it or not, that is another sign of abuse. Um, I don't give a fuck if Tom and Harry and, and Jesus pissed you off. You ain't about to take that shit out on me. So, first, let's get that straightened the fuck out. If the niggas have a mood swing, sweetheart, bitch, you need to set that shit the fuck straight. And let him know, we're not about to go through this and I'm not about to take that shit from you. If you want to have your tantrums and your mood swings and your fallouts, then by all means, you can have that and you can do that on your own. And when you can regain yourself and act like a grown-up, then you could come through and talk to me. But until then, I don't want to deal with you. And though, as much as you like him and you probably don't want to lose him, sweetheart, heart you don't want to lose your sanity and yourself from a man or a female because they're bringing you back down mood swings is not cool okay let's not just brush this under the rug like it's a little bit of dust but how to handle somebody with that is not to fucking handle them and not to deal with them i'll be damned if i'm gonna let anybody's fucking mood swings fuck up my vibe you ain't about to fuck my vibe up for the day and fuck me up mentally okay so with his mood swings with that being said and a bitch will fling her motherfucking hair with that being said and his motherfucking mood swings sweetheart that's like a sign to me a fucking abuse all right and 
when he comes back and says, well, it wasn't you, that's just a way of an apology that is like, okay, it wasn't you, but this is the reason why. And, and he's trying to make it all right. Nothing is all right. Don't have no motherfucking mood swings with me because a bitch can have a mood swing too. I can have a mood swing real motherfucking quick. If you got a dude that's having mood swings, sweetheart, you may want to check that and reevaluate the relationship and see, is it really worth going through? Because if he's stressing you the fuck out, and he's being mean and nasty to you because of shit. Then it's only going to get fucking worse. Okay? Trust me and take it from me. And for anybody else out there who has been in a domestic violence situation. Knows where I'm coming from. Then just put hashtag no domestic violence. Okay? For real. I'm sorry, sweetheart. But Chanel, maybe a year being single was not enough time. Some people think that they've been single for a few months or a year and they think it's long enough when no, it's not. Sometimes you have to really evaluate your life. This is what I'm talking about when I just said that. Yeah, I'm back with somebody. I'm back with my ex-husband. And I enjoy the part that we're not together, living together right now because I'm allowed myself to focus on myself, focus on losing my weight, Focus on making my YouTube channel better, making my business better, and just being financially more stable and just enjoying my life. So this is what I'm doing. And sometimes with a man around, you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Because you're so busy focusing them on them. So sometimes we got to take time to ourselves. Whether you be all the way on the other side of the motherfucking world and I'm right here. We have to take time to ourselves and figure shit the fuck out and better ourselves. So that way when we get a relationship, then it's a good fucking relationship you understand what i'm saying you feel me you feel me so yes on that note you guys let her know let chanel know what is your take on people and they mood swings a nigga got mood swings so he getting upset and taking it out and yelling at people man you'd have been kicked to the motherfucking curve but you know that's just me that's just what the fuck i would do okay Yes. So, on that note, I'm going to go. I'm about to go do my walk for three miles. I'm about to go put my little workout pants on. I don't know if I should. I think I'm going to just pin my hair up because I wanted to go to the 99 cents only store. And you can't be ugly at the 99 cents only store. You got to be like really cute when you go to the 99 cents only store, you know, especially if you're going to like record. So, yeah. Oh, did you hear that tongue smack? Yeah, not now, but... Oh, anyway, y'all heard it. Y'all heard that shit. It was loud. Mm. There we go. So anyway, I love you guys. Let you know, know what you would do. I'm going to go work it out. Work it out. And I will see you all in a soon-to-come video. I love you guys. And stay deep and delicious.